Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Fernando Florido, a GP in the United Kingdom. Today we're going to talk about inhalers, those small but powerful things that are a lifeline for people with asthma and COPD. But in the world of inhalers, things can get quite complex. With a multitude of brand names and different devices, navigating this world can feel like getting lost in a maze. We'll try to bring order to this labyrinth by reviewing the nice guidance on inhalers, both for asthma and COPD. I have summarised the guidance from a primary care perspective and I have put links to that guidance in the episode description. But before we begin, let's address the elephant in the room. Memorising the vast array of brand names, combinations and different devices is no easy task. Not only would it be an overwhelming challenge, but it would also consume valuable brain power that would be better utilised in other areas of our lives. So here's my advice, it's absolutely okay to look up specific inhaler brands when you need to. In today's digital age, we can quickly find the information we need without wasting our mental energy on trying to remember everything. This frees up our minds to focus on what truly matters. Remember that you can check the podcast version in the description below. Please note that this is my interpretation of the guidelines, not medical advice. So with that said, hit the subscribe button and let's dive in. The video has four parts, inhaled corticosteroids, inhaled vitragonists, inhaled antimuscarinic agents and combination inhalers. Let's start with inhaled corticosteroids, both for asthma and COPD. What should we consider when initiating inhaled corticosteroids? We should avoid prescribing generic inhalers to ensure continuity of the device type in future. The various inhaled corticosteroids are similar in efficacy and adverse effect profile. However, we need to remember that QVAR and Kelhale products have extra fine beclomethasone particles and are twice as potent as other beclomethasone inhalers. What delivery systems are available for inhaled corticosteroids? First, we have pressurized meter dose inhalers or MDIs, which use propellant and have an environmental impact. We also have spacer devices with MDIs, which are the preferred option for children under five. Then we have the dry powder inhalers or DPIs, which do not use propellant, but require enough inspiratory effort to breathe in the powder. We also have the breath actuated MDIs, which also require sufficient inspiratory effort to activate the device. Finally, Nebulizer has given us an aerosol that can be inhaled through a mask or mouthpiece. A mouthpiece is preferable to avoid adverse effects caused by exposure to the skin and eyes. There are no contraindications to the use of inhaled corticosteroids and they can be given during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Cautions are untreated tuberculosis, fungal, bacterial, parasitic or systemic viral infections as well as ocular herpes simplex. What are the effects of inhaled corticosteroids? Well, they have a potent anti-inflammatory activity, both the immediate and late phases of asthma. Inhaled corticosteroids available in the UK include beclomethasone, budesonide, cyclesonide, fluticasone and mometasone. They're also available as combination inhalers containing long-acting beta-2 agonists. In asthma, a long-acting bronchodilator should be given in combination with an inhaled corticosteroids. In other words, a long-acting bronchodilator should not be given normally in isolation for asthma. Conversely, in COPD, an inhaled corticosteroid should be given in combination with a long-acting bronchodilator, having discussed the risk of adverse effects, including an increased risk of pneumonia, which may require hospitalization. In other words, an inhaled corticosteroids should not normally be given in isolation for COPD. Local adverse effects include oral candidiasis, sore mouth, dysphonia and hoarseness, especially in high doses, as well as paradoxical bronchospasm. Systemic adverse effects are rare, but may occur if high doses are prescribed for prolonged periods. We will issue a steroid treatment card to people using prolonged high doses and also to people taking drug that inhibits steroid metabolism, such as antiretroviral HIV drugs. In children, 
Height should be monitored regularly, and we will use the lowest dose of inhaled corticosteroids that maintains effective control of symptoms. Which inhaled corticosteroids are available in the UK? If you want to give beclometasone, we can prescribe one of the following brands. Clenil MDI, Isihaila Beclometasone, Kelhail MDI, Cuva MDI, Cuva Autohaila, Cuva Easy Breeze, Soprobec MDI and Beclu MDI. But we need to be aware that Kelhail and Cuva contain Beclometasone extra fine particles and are therefore more potent. If you want to give Budesonide, we will prescribe one of the following brands Budelin Novolysa, Isihela Budesonide and Palmicot Terpahyla. If you want to give Cyclesonide, we will prescribe Alvesco MDI. If we want to give Fluticasone, we will prescribe Flixotide, either the Evohela MDI or the Acuhela. And if we want to give Mometasone, we will prescribe Asmanex Twistaila. What dosing regimens should we consider? NICE has issued the following guidance on inhaled corticosteroid dosages. A high dose is more than 800 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent in adults and more than 400 micrograms in children. A moderate dose is between 400 and 800 micrograms of budesonide or equivalent in adults and between 200 and 400 micrograms in children. A low dose is 400 micrograms or less of budesonide or equivalent in adults or 200 micrograms or less in children. Examples of dose equivalents are as follows. Budesonide 200 micrograms would be equivalent to 200 micrograms of metasone, 200 micrograms of beclomethasone, but only 100 micrograms if we prescribe beclomethasone extra fine particles. Equally, budesonide 200 micrograms would be more or less equivalent to 160 micrograms of cyclesonide or 125 micrograms of fluticasone. Let's now move on to the section of beta agonists. By way of introduction, we will say that beta-2 agonists act directly on beta-2 receptors causing smooth muscle relaxation and dilatation of the airways. Short-acting beta-2 agonists, or SABAs, such as albutamol and tabutalin, have a rapid onset of action, about 15 minutes, and their effects last up to 4 hours. Long-acting beta-2 agonists, or LABAs, have a prolonged receptor occupancy and salmitrol and fomotrol have a duration of action of 12 hours. And in asthma, they should only be used with an inhaled corticosteroids. Indacatrol and olodatrol are once daily labas licensed for use in COPD in adults. They are not indicated for the relief of acute bronchospasm. Vilantrol is available only in combination with fluticasone and or with the antimuscarinic Umeclidinium. Beta-2 agonists should be used with caution in people with hypothyroidism as they may stimulate thyroid activity, cardiovascular disease including hypertension because of changes to blood pressure and heart rate, and an increased risk of arrhythmias, especially if there is susceptibility to QT interval prolongation. Hypokalemia, as this may be caused by high doses of beta-2 agonists, and convulsive disorders. Adverse effects of short-acting and long-acting beta-2 agonists are similar. They are usually dose-related and include nervous system disorders such as tremor, headache, dizziness and seizures, cardiac disorders such as palpitations, arrhythmias, peripheral vasodilatation and myocardial ischemia, psychiatric disorders such as anxiety, restlessness and insomnia metabolic disorders such as hypokalemia and hyperglycemia, respiratory disorders such as oropharyngeal irritation and paradoxical bronchospasm, which is rare, musculoskeletal disorders such as muscle cramps and acute angle closure glaucoma, which has been reported in people using nebulized short-acting beta-2 agonists. Using a mouthpiece rather than a mask is preferable to avoid this. We should advise people who are using terbutylene terbohalia to rinse their mouth after each use to minimize systemic absorption. Because of the hypokalemia risk, 
we should monitor potassium levels with digoxin and potassium depleting drugs like corticosteroids, diuretics and theophylline. Also non-selective beta blocking drugs such as propanolol and the manufacturer recommends avoid. And ketoconazole may increase plasma levels of salmitrol. We short acting beta 2 agonists are available in the UK. Salbutamol is available in the form of Aeromir Autohaila and MDI, Salamol Easy Breeze, Salamol MDI, Ventolin Evohaila, Easy Hela Salbutamol, and Salbulin Novolysa. Terbutalin can be found in the form of Bricanil Terbohaila. Which long acting beta 2 agonists are available? As we have said before, we can use individual lab inhalers for COPD. We have formotrol, and formotrol can be prescribed as Atimos Modulate, Foradil DPI, Oxysterpahaila, and formotrol Isihaila. Then we have Samitrol, which can be prescribed as Neovent MDI, Cervent Evohaila, and Acuhaila, and Soltel MDI. Indacatrol, which can be prescribed as Onbreeze, Brisaila, and Olodatrol, which can be prescribed as Striverdi, Respimat. And then we have the combination inhalers, both for asthma and COPD, but we're going to look at them separately in the fourth section of this video. We're now going to look at the inhaled antimuscarinic agents. Muscarinic antagonists cause bronchodilation by blocking the bronchoconstrictor effect of acetylcholine on airway smooth muscle. Ipatropium is a short-acting muscarinic antagonist or SAMA. The maximal effect is 30 to 60 minutes and the duration of action is 3 to 6 hours. Long-acting muscarinic antagonists or LAMAs have a prolonged bronchodilator effect. Examples are teotropium and also acladinium, glycopyronium and umeclidinium. Which short-acting muscarinic antagonists are available for COPD? Excluding the preparation for nebulizers, we only have ipatropium MDI. Which long-acting muscarinic antagonists are available for COPD? Teotropium can be prescribed as Spariva Respimat, Spariva Inhalation Powder, Icopair Inhalation Powder, Taogiva Inhalation Powder, and Brantus Inhalation Powder. One capsule of Praltus contains a metered dose of 13 micrograms teotropium, whilst the others contain 18 micrograms. However, the delivered dose of all products are the same, 10 micrograms, so no dose adjustment is necessary when switching between brands. Acladinium can be prescribed as a clearer inhalation powder, and glycopyronium can be prescribed as Seabri Brisailer and umiclidinium can be prescribed as Incruz Elipta dry powder inhaler. Antimuscarinic should be used with caution in prostatic hyperplasia and bladder outflow obstruction, renal impairment, ankle closure glaucoma, especially with nebulizers, and pregnancy or breastfeeding. Additionally, teotropium should be used with caution in people with cardiac arrhythmias, heart failure, or myocardial infarction in the previous six months because there is an increased risk of all-cause mortality following the use of this product. Lastly, combination hypertropium with salbutamol is contraindicated in people with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy or tachyarrhythmia. The adverse effects of antimuscarinics include cardiac disorders such as arrhythmias and palpitations, respiratory disorders such as paradoxical bronchospasm, throat irritation and cough, gastrointestinal disorders such as a dry mouth, abnormal taste, nausea, vomiting, constipation and diarrhea, ENT disorders such as nasal congestion, dryness of nasal mucosa and epistaxis, nervous system disorders such as headache and dizziness, urinary disorders such as bladder outflow obstruction and prostatic hyperplasia, and visual disorders including acute angle closure glaucoma. Concurrent use of inhaled antimuscarinic with other antimuscarinic drugs is not recommended as the effects of concurrent use have not been studied. 
We're now going to move to look at combination inhalers. And there are three types of combination inhalers. Combination of an inhaled corticosteroids with a lava, which can be used in both asthma and COPD. Combination of three drugs, an inhaled corticosteroids, a lama and a lava for use in COPD. And combination of a lama and a lava, that is without an inhaled corticosteroids for use in COPD. So, what inhaled corticosteroids and LABA combination inhalers are available in the UK? We have the following combinations. Beclomethasone and Fomotrol, both as MDI and dry powder inhaler. They include Foster MDI, Foster Nextaler and Lufobec MDI. We need to be aware that Foster and Lufobec contain extra fine beclomethasone and therefore they are more potent than traditional beclomethasone CFC free inhalers so the dose should be lower. The combination of budesonide and formoterol come only as a dry powder inhaler in the form of Duresp, Sparomax, Symbicort, Turbohaler, Phobimix, Easyhaler and Walker dry powder inhaler. Then we have fruticasone and formoterol, both as MDIs and dry powder inhalers in the form of flutiform MDI and flutiform k -hailer. The biggest group belong to the fluticasone and salmitrol combination, both as MDIs and dry powder inhalers. There are 15 different inhalers, such as Aveno MDI, Airfrusal for Spiral, Airfrusal MDI, Alflut MDI, Campona Airmaster, Combistal MDI, Fixco Airmaster, Fusico Misihela, Cereflow MDI, Cereflow Saifela, Ceretide Acuhela, Ceretide Evohela, Cerdupla MDI, Stalpex Dry Powder Inhaler, and Cephalair Sparomax. And on the other extreme, we have just one inhaler for the fluticasone and Villantrol combination, which is the Dry Powder Inhaler. Relva ellipta. The next question is what inhaled corticosteroids, LABA and LAMA combination inhalers are available? And we have three groups. First we have the beclomethasone, glycoperonium and formoterol combination, both as MDIs and dry powder inhalers. And they are Trimbo MDI and Trimbo Nextaler. Then we have the combination of budesonide, glycoperonium and formoterol as an MDI which is Trixeo MDI. And as a third group, we have fluticasone, umeclidinium and Villantrol as a dry powder inhaler in the form of Trelegy Ellipta. Finally, what LABA and LAMA combination inhalers are available in the UK? There are four. Glycoperonium with formoterol as an MDI in the form of Bevespi Aerosphere, Glycoperonium and Indacatrol as a dry powder inhaler in the form of Altibrol Breeze Inhaler, and Aclidinium with Formotrol as a dry powder inhaler as Geoclear. And lastly, Teotropium and Olodatrol as an MDI in the form of Spiral Torespimat. I have checked the NICE guidance and the BNF in order to make this list as exhaustive as possible. If I left any inhaler out, please let me know in the comment section below. In conclusion, what is important is to know the effect and indications of the different inhaled drugs. Remembering all the different inhaler brands and combinations is tough, so it's okay to look them up when you need to. Please keep in mind that this is only a summary and my interpretation of the guidance. Please let me know your views in the comment section below. We have come to the end of this video. I hope that you have found it useful, and if so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching and goodbye.